happening to y'all. That's the Silver Spear, basic, very standard tune that gets played a lot. And it's one that I already did a video on, but somebody recently left a comment saying, any chance you could take another run at it, because your old video looks like it was made in 16-bit. So here's uh, Silver Spear in D. <sighs> I thought, man, that's cold. And then I actually look back, and no, that's pretty accurate, unfortunately. It was a very old video, so it's worth another look. Let's break it down. Now the tune is in D, grab a D whistle. I'm playing my Gary Humphrey just because it's here and it's one I like playing a lot. So I'll play the basic melody as usual, nice and slow, and we'll go through and add on some of the ornaments and some other fun stuff as well. This is another option to deep dive if you want on my Patreon. I've got a much more thorough breakdown of a lot of different variations and some of the more advanced sort of things if you want to really get into it and, and break down the old excruciating minutia. But here we go, basic melody first, starting with the A part. first half. Fortunately, this is one of those tunes that's got a fair bit of repetition to it between the, the segments of the A part and the same with the segments of the B part, and there's some even crossover there between the parts, so hopefully once you get it, you'll be able to reuse a lot of it. So here's the second half of the, the A part, and then we'll go back and put it all together. So here we go. You got it. We'll run the whole thing nice and slow still. We're not really worried about speed or any of the fancy stuff yet. We will get to that. Basic melody all the way through. See how much you can get here. Okay, success, hopefully. Go back and run it a few times if you need to get that. Now we'll dive into the B part. Keep in mind the B part of this tune does spend a lot of time in that upper octave, so mind your hearing and the hearing of those around you. You can drop down the octave if you want. For purposes of this demonstration, I'm gonna keep it up high. Um, it doesn't go beyond the high B, but even the high B can be fairly shrill. So keep that in mind, so here we go. first half of the B part, here's the second half, and then we'll link it together and get the whole thing. Hopefully that last half of the B part, the last section, the last half of that last section that I just did, hopefully that's going to sound fairly familiar because it's a repeat of the way the A part ends, especially with the triplet and all that stuff, which we'll get into. Here's the whole B part, all the way through, jump in and play along. That, that's the main bit to worry about there, and that's kind of the baseline of the melody, which we will then evolve as we break down some of the ornaments and some of the different options that we can play with. To get started, there's a couple of real simple things you can do right off the bat. Just throw it in a roll in that first A, because of the basic melody, if you remember from the A part, three A's back to back, perfect spot for a roll. Slide a couple times if you want there. I'm really not doing anything else there. Ordinarily, I wouldn't do a whole lot on that part. It just seems to work kind of as it, as it does. As 
I finish the phrase, I do like sliding into that beat. And then a cut to get out of it. Because the basic melody, just as a reminder, quarter note, eighth note. So quarter notes are good options for cuts and for maybe short rolls and stuff like that. And then sliding back off and then around to the kind of the turn to get back to the second half of the A parts, which is. Now, let's talk about that triplet. Uh, when I did the basic melody, That's how I did it. Nice and slow, nice and simple. The actual notes that you'd really be playing would be a B, a C sharp, and a D. However, if you do a C natural instead, you get a really cool rhythmic effect. And before you go, ah, there's no C natural in the key of D, true. But it happens so quickly you don't even notice and it becomes a rhythmic ornament rather than a melodic one. So the way you do that, rather than B, C sharp, D, B, C natural, D, and as you go from the B to the C natural, I'm kind of accidentally bouncing off of a G, uh, which gives this sort of weird bubbly sound. You hear that bump, that extra little sound you get? That's the rhythmic bit. And when you do it quickly, you don't really hear the C natural. All you hear is the bump, that part. You know, you hear the, the rhythmic bit of it. So, rolls back to back to finish the phrase. I, I will do that almost every time I play this tune because it's just tradition, I guess. It's classic, it works. Uh, so that whole phrase then... Like so. What you can do on the B part is really going to depend on how much faith you've got in your whistle because it does spend so much time in the higher half of the octave. You got to be a little bit more careful about your ornaments. You got to be very confident in your grace notes, especially the cuts, uh, to make sure you're not going to break the note, break the whistle. So try this at your own peril, I guess. I'll give you a couple of other maybe more safe options as well, but here's how I would play it. Right? So you've got a couple of things in there. We've got sliding into the beginning of it, because I think that's always kind of a cool way to get, a, get started on a phrase. And then a roll on the high A. That's the one where you might run into trouble. It's very easy to break that note, the high A and the high B, if you're cutting above it. So confidence in your instrument and knowing what it can and can't do is a big part of it. If that's not working, if you're having trouble cutting above that note for some reason, maybe it's the whistle, maybe it's just a bit of practice, you could always tap below it and skip that first cut. So... You're just tonguing to separate the two notes, the first two, and then tapping to hit the bottom one, because that's a little bit safer, a little bit more reliable. You know, it's an option. So I did a double tap there. As I'm coming from uh, G to the F sharp, I use that trick a lot just because my fingers work pretty well there and it just fits. Optional, for sure, but... As I, as I land on that, I'm just kind of doing an extra bounce, basically, is all that is. Same rhythmic triplet to get back there. We're going to reuse that. You can do a nice thing where you're cutting and sliding. Cut, slide, and you're combining two, two uh, ornaments there. And then sliding to finish the phrase, just like we did before. This phrase, the B part, then does end up the same way that the A part does. back-to-back -back rolls on the G and the F sharp. Because, again, just really sounds great. That's sort of the, the hook of this tune, I think, the, the way that that phrase ends. So let me know what you think of this one. If you do want to go on the deep dive excursion, uh, feel free to hit up my Patreon. i got a link down below. Break down a lot of different variations and some additional ornaments that are kind of more advanced, or maybe just other options, really. And let me know what you guys think. Hopefully this is a better take on this video than the one I did a thousand years ago. <laughs> let me know. And I will see you all in the next one. Cheers.